build themselves into a higher possibility. If you get one problem, let's see how to handle that. You don't multiply it in your head. If you shift this focus, we will go through any kind of time. When time to act in the world becomes open, you will be in a great advantage. If you're committed to enhancing your life, lifestyle will happen. Right now, there is just so much suffering that it's... and you open the TV or the internet or everywhere, how... how does one cope? I mean, is... is... is it the same way, meditation and praying or is it staying present or your breath? The things you often talk about, are those things relevant? Is there something else people should do right now to just... just cope, you know, and not lose hope? Young kids are telling me, we'll never get a job, what is going to happen to my life? It's like, what... what would you say to to such people. See, one thing is uh, a whole lot of people in the world go about like they're immortal. Now mortality is staring in your face like never before probably. So this is one thing that's upsetting people. We need to understand if we have to stay sensible, we have... we must be consciously aware. Every moment of our life if we are aware that we are mortal, we will organize and plan our lives and the little time that we have and the energy that we have in the best possible way. This idea that other people die, no, 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 you and me will die. We want to complete our time and die, that's all. There's no such thing as we will not die. But everybody thinks other people die. No, 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 you and me will die, that goes for everybody. We are all mortal creatures, we are all dying kind, all right? Now with the virus, it's staring in our face, but it was always staring in our face and we were missing the point. Having said that, this is not to be insensitive to the deaths that have happened, loss of dear ones, loss of economic losses, loss of jobs, everything. But we need to understand this. This is a time when mortality is so obvious to everybody. This is a time to understand our focus should be on the nature of our life and the quality of this life. Right now, most people's focus is on their lifestyle. So everybody's crying about the loss of lifestyle. I'm saying if you have life, it's good enough. Lifestyle is just of our times. If all of us were here a thousand years ago, maybe all of us would be living in huts. Those people that you think in Mumbai are very poor, maybe we would be in same kind of squalor and we wouldn't mind, we thought it's fine. All right? So right now, somebody else is living in a better house, comparing myself to that person, now I suffer my home. This need not be so. Do not be committed to lifestyle. Your commitment should be to make this life as beautiful as possible. If you shift this focus, we will go through any kind of time. We must understand this, compared to previous generations of people. There were world wars, there were famines, there were terrible events that happened in the world and including in India, all right? This generation, we have not seen anything like that. This is a bad one, but still it's a soft ball. If you behave responsibly, it is not going to hit you. However responsible you are, if a war is happening, bombs would... you know, bullets and bombs would just kill you, it doesn't matter where you are. Today, unfortunately in India, we have this problem because I've been talking to so many people, I'm saying this, people think war means it happens on the border. <laughs> no, it is happening on the border, it is happening on the border because a few brave men and women are standing there and because of their efficiency, it is happening only on the border. If they don't stand there, it will be happening in Delhi. If our soldiers are not doing their job well, their soldiers, the enemy soldiers will be walking on the streets, all right? And you know all the terrible things that have happened with the past invasions, don't forget that. I am saying that way, as a generation of people, in terms of comforts and conveniences, no generation ever had these kind of comforts and conveniences. No generation had survival better organized th than this generation. We just have to make sure nobody starves. That's all. Rest of it is only loss of lifestyle. Don't make big fuss about it. This is a time for every human being to build themselves into a higher possibility. 
either in your competence, in your emotion, in your thought, in your experience of life, in your joyfulness, in your peacefulness, in every way, please use this time to upgrade yourself. When time to act in the world becomes open, you will be in a great advantage. Rather than sitting and crying, right now WHO is saying that it is not just this pandemic, there is going to be a mental pandemic and there's going to be a suicide pandemic. See, our problem is if we get one problem, we want to multiply it into many. No, if you get one problem, let's see how to handle that. Don't multiply it in your head. Yes, it is a serious issue, it's not a joke. Yes, there is tremendous losses for everybody, but focus on being committed to your life, not to your lifestyle. Then you will see everything will change in many ways. See, uh, if you committed to a lifestyle without being committed to enhancing this life, inevitably, one way or the other, you will move into crime. Maybe crime outside of the law or crime within the law, but inevitably you will move into crime once you're committed to lifestyle. If you're committed to enhancing your life, lifestyle will happen according to our competence and in the times in which we live. See, we must understand our lifestyles are all not made by us. Our lifestyles are of the times. See, right now, in uh, twenty-three, twenty-four hours from India, I'm here in United States. If it was a uh, hundred years ago, coming to United States means probably forty-five, fifty days up and forty-five, fifty days down, all right? But people are saying this, twenty-two hours of flight is too long. <laughs> Repeatedly, they're telling me, I said, what is too long? I'm glad it's only twenty-two hours, otherwise uh, people were, you know, sitting on a steamship and going, before that on a sailboat, not even knowing whether they'll get there or not. So I'm saying we are having as a generation of people, we have the best of everything. Never before humanity has had these kind of things. Now, if we commit to enhancing our life rather than just enhancing our lifestyles, we can become the best generation ever because our survival issues are largely settled. We must understand this, three hundred years ago, if you want water in the morning, you had to walk down to the well or river or pond to carry two buckets of water. Today, how many young men and women are even capable of carrying two buckets of water a mile? Physically capable, they're not anymore <laughs> I'm saying. So you open the tap, water comes, hot water comes, cold water comes, everything happens, and you're cribbing and cribbing and cribbing, please don't crib use your life because whether you do something or not, whether you're joyful or miserable, whether you're making something out of yourself or nothing out of yourself, time is rolling away, time is ticking away. You must understand that since you and me started talking, everybody who's listening and all of us, including you and me, are forty-seven minutes closer to our grave. If you think about it once in a way, it causes paranoia, but if you listen to the body, every beat in the body, it is clearly saying it is mortal, all right? Always it is reminding you it is mortal. If you are conscious every moment of your life, well, you wouldn't want to waste one moment doing something that doesn't mean anything to you. You would do only what truly matters to you. If all of us were doing only what genuinely, genuinely matters to us, we will be living in a fantastic world, pandemic or no pandemic.